Thank you for joining us for this episode of Take Notice, Amplifying Black Stories. I am your host, Allison Pricinger Higgins. Take Notice, Amplifying Black Stories is a podcast exploring society, culture, and current events through conversation. We aspire to create an open, respectful, and equitable space where guests may feel free to share their truth and lived experiences. Our core values are rooted in community, connection, and personal development. Stories help us learn, relate, and grow. We are here to listen, to take notice. Thank you for being with us. I would like to show gratitude to the traditional ancestral land of the Puyallup people past and present on which this episode was created. I encourage listeners to research the land on which you live and are listening right now. Recognizing this is just the beginning. The more you explore, challenge, and learn, the more questions may arise, but this is how we grow and connect. Thank you for listening to Take Notice. On this episode, we welcome Kimberly Walker. Kimberly is an inspirational speaker, professor, author, motivator, entrepreneur, and a beauty queen who sells tea. Walker has coupled her love for tea and self-care. Her passion is to inspire and motivate women to embrace their whole self, to see, to accept, to love, and soar into their personal awesomeness. You'll hear stories about her entrepreneurial journey, her work with King County, and her experience as a beauty queen. We met up at the ACE offices, which are part of Tacoma Arts Live, located at the Tacoma Armory in Tacoma, Washington. During our conversation, we mentioned an event that is upcoming as we're talking, but has since passed. It's called Brew 253 here in Tacoma. So I want to encourage you to connect with Kimberly in other ways, see what else is coming up in the future. You can do that by visiting her website, yourteaqueen.com, or connect with her on Instagram or TikTok. You just find her at officially your tea queen. Her husband was able to hang out with us as well during our conversation. So, so there's little mentions of him also in our conversation, and it was great to connect with him as well. So please enjoy this episode with Kimberly Walker. All right. Kimberly, thank you for joining me on Take Notice and meeting me here at the Armory where we met just a few months ago. Yes. (laughs) Thanks for joining me. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm doing good. Uh, I'm a little hot. It's warm today. At the moment. You know, however, we just came back from Arizona a couple weeks ago and the 118, the 117 um, does not compare to this. I take this Mm -hmm. over that. Totally. So perspective, I'm I'm well. (laughs) Right? Oh my my goodness i can breathe how long were you in arizona five days okay long was it just like hopping from one ac to the other just um, like running we were pretty much in the house the whole five days <laughs> no kidding. yeah it's my husband's oh my birthday gosh. so what, what can you do with is that hot i and know wow. it's arizona Oof. it's dry that sounds Desert. rough yeah oh and it was goodness. windstorms too right oh really so you get windstorm in 118 degree weather oh does that kick up dust? And, oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Hide away in the house. That's, that's I love the thing Washington. to do. <laughs> totally. <laughs> we're home. It's still hot, but we're home. <laughs> right? right. Oh. Did you grow up in Washington, or where did you grow up? Pretty much in Washington. So I was okay. born in Santa Rosa, California. That's okay. my country. But at about seven to eight months years old, my parents brought us up here to Washington State. So I've been here. Ever since and I grew up in Renton, actually. Renton, if you know, you know. Um, and <laughs> also have lived in Tacoma. And uh, my parents helped to uh, pastor a church up here on the hilltop years ago. So I, I've i been around. Yeah, yeah, around this area. Yeah. And the, yeah, what brought them up to Washington when you were young? Well, my father, when he was about 19, he became a merchant seaman. And so one of the stops was actually Seattle. And when he came here during that journey, he said, I'm going to raise my family here. Oh, and nice. not too soon after, he met my mom and they got married. And mm. ta-da, he brought his family back up here. Oh, awesome. He just loved uh, where he felt. Mm. He really thought it was beautiful and the water and mm. found peace. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, That's the best way to bring you anywhere. And the Pacific Northwest is unique for that, for sure. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did, was he able to find work that brought you all up at that time? Or did you come up and, and he found work? You know, or do you even know? Because you were, were super they were young. So, yeah, they were, I think, 20, 
uh, 21 and 22. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they were babies themselves. Yeah. But yes, he's still kind of a baby at 21, 22. It's true. It's very true. Very true. Um, <laughs> and they didn't have family support when they moved up here. Okay. So he literally is about on faith and he went to, um, he wanted to become a doctor, but when he received his medical um, school scholarships, he actually brought his family out of the uh, South Side, St. Louis. So that was pretty, pretty rough spot. It's the hood. Mm. So he used his money to bring his family out of poverty and to California. Mm. And so he didn't get a chance to go to med- medical school, but he always had a love for like things medical. So he became a um, ph- phlebotomist, oh. was drawing of blood. And yeah. so that's what he did when he moved up here. Oh, nice. Did he keep doing that? Was that his career for was, a while? Yes, yeah, still. He teaches yeah. today. Um, we, we had a business um, where we did a lot of app work for different medical centers and facilities in here in Washington State. So he he loves blood. It sounds weird, but it's true. <laughs> He's like, I love blood. It's life. In a good way. <laughs> yes. Like, <laughs> like, you're weird, Dad. Please step away. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do all that. I mean, I can, I can draw blood. I know how to find your vein, all that. Mm-hmm. Um, so my my parents, they grew up really with me, right? Because they were so young when yeah. they had me. And, yeah. But yes, I grew up here in Washington State and went to Renton High School. And before that, it was Nelson Middle School and Lake Ridge Elementary School. Oh, okay. That was my trilogy of schools. And then I um, actually went to Washington State University. And then I got my graduate degree from University of Washington. Oh, okay. So okay. Cougar Dog. Yeah, yeah. Yes, there I you know. go. Yes. <laughs> There's some conflict there. Oh, right here. yes. We are ble- <laughs> rare breed, you know. But right. I say if you've done your time in the Palouse, then you deserve to wrap it however, however you want to. Yes, you know? I agree. I lived there for two years, <laughs> really? but not because I was there for school. I was there after school, actually. I went to school in Boston. Okay. Followed a dude over to, to uh-huh. Pullman and was just working. So I can kind of get it, though mm-hmm. I didn't go to the college, have the college experience there, yeah. but uh, witnessed it. <laughs> I'm sure it's so small. Like, yes. Yeah. And it's so beautiful out there. But yeah, yes. after a couple of years, I had to get out. Mm-hmm. So. Get out. Mm-hmm. I get it. Mm-hmm. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> what did your mom do when she when you were growing up? Well, you know, she um, went to school for nursing. Mm-hmm. And so she did that. But once she had me, she actually uh, found out that she has rheumatoid arthritis. Mm-hmm. So it actually um, kind of crippled her from doing a lot of kind of work, physical work. Mm. So she did like insurance claims for a while. And then really my parents started a business. She really is the brain behind the business. That was the labor behind the business. And nice. she raised her children. So she made it work for her. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. It seems like within the realm uh, with the phlebotomy business, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Do they still run that business or has it changed no, hands? It, or? It's changed. Well, the initial company has changed hands. Um, and he does like, he's really good at what he does. So even now people will call him with rare cases. Oh. Um, not everyone's easy to, to get blood from. And so you, you have to understand and know how to actually do it right. without causing lots of pain. Mm-hmm. And so he'll get called for folks who have severe medical conditions mm-hmm. or babies who are having a hard time finding their veins and He's that guy. Oh, he's the one. And he's been trained probably thousands of people in phlebotomy over the last 30 years. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. It's cool. That's really great. They were able to work together, too. Mm -hmm. I imagine for some families that doesn't work as well, but it sounds like a great, great fit for them. That's that's They're real people. They... I'm sure he got on her nerves oh, and sure. she got on his nerves <laughs> and she told him and he told her. But they loved each other and you know, for yeah. our family, faith is everything. So they really centered faith as a way to survive being really on their own with their small family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have siblings growing up? I do. I yeah. have. So I have a baby sister who's 10 years younger than me and I have a middle sister who is three and a half years younger than oh, me. Okay. I'm the oldest. Yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm the oldest. And then I also have another sister who's right under me. Um, mm. I just met her a couple of years ago. So that was an interesting story. I was like, oh, oh all right. Um, oh. So it was cool to kind of see someone who's like a lighter skin version of yourself. You're like, oh, really? Huh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That would be because, you know, y- years of not knowing and then all of a sudden I can't even imagine. You know, and you're like, oh, yeah. I was like, I never thought that would be me. 
Mm-hmm. But it was. It was like, oh, gosh, I can make a Hallmark movie. Yes, yes I can. <laughs> yes, I can make some money. <laughs> totally. Totally. Is that something that you're comfortable sharing a bit more about, like how that came up? Or? Oh, sure. Well, yeah. like so my parents got married when they really were young. Uh-huh. And so their first year of marriage, they thought that they were going to get divorced. So they separated. Okay. They thought, it's over. I'm not going back to that person. So they, all, they both did their own thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so my mother, she went into the Army. Military met someone. Things happened. I was, I was then. Uh, she got pregnant with me, and then by the time before, before I was born, her and my father came back together. Mm-hmm. And my father told the gentleman, who was a biological father, that you can go on about your business now because this is my child. Mm-hmm. He's like, great. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I on. see. And so I didn't know my father had loved me as his own from day one. I didn't know until I was about twenty-seven years old. Oh, wow. and I learned. I was like, oh. No way. It was like, wow. They're like, oh, well, yes, actually, this is what happened. So, right. um, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, my, p- my parents were both pastors. And so it was a very, like, interesting twist to our story, mm-hmm. you know. But it also showed just how blessed I am because my sister didn't have as great of an experience with the biological father mm. um, that we share. And so, I definitely got better in the stick. Mm. Having a father who was always there, always loved, always sacrificed, always protected, always covered. So, mm. yeah, it was, wow. but you know, I didn't meet her until um, we just got married last year. And so we met her. I met her a little bit before then she came to my wedding. It was part of my wedding. Oh, oh that's beautiful. So, oh, yes, nice. kind of just that timing thing. So, um, my baby sister was being nosy. It's like, I, I'm curious. And she starts searching and digging. And, Mm. Lo and behold, we found names and wow. Facebook was the connector. Isn't that wild? I know. Oh, man. For all the things that it does, it does bring people together it, and opportunities. It does. And things. It That's does. amazing. Yeah. Wow. So does she live in this area or? No, she's in North Carolina. Oh, really? You're, it was so funny because my husband, he's from South Carolina. And so it was just oh, wow. this interesting connection. And actually for me, for years, people would say up here in Washington, you have a sister, you have a twin, you have a twin in North Carolina. I was like, I haven't even been there before. Oh, really? Yes, that's probably about 18, 19, the first time it happened. And then I actually went down to North Carolina for a conference for college. And I was like, something about this area feels familiar. Didn't know, forgot about it. And then wow. all these years later. Wow. Here we go. I actually have roots there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's That's amazing. And she's not that much younger than you, you she's said, like, right? She's a, a year, maybe almost two years okay. younger than me. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So wild. Amazing. I know. <laughs> I know. It's sad and just beautiful to have her part of my wedding. And That's really nice. And my uh, God sends her. They kind of did a double take like, that's not God, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> you have such it's similar features right? and everything. Yeah, oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah. That's amazing. Awesome. Are uh, are your other siblings in this area now? They are. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's nice. They're both here. We all live in about 30 minutes from each other, and oh, we're a very nice. close family. Nice. So we have, um, I have two nieces and two nephews, and so they run us all. Yeah, of course. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yes. <laughs> it's the of our world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's wonderful. What did you, so you said you got your graduate degree from the UW, is yes, that right? Yes. What did you end up getting your degree in? Actually, social work. Okay. So I, um, my undergrad was in communications at the Edward R. Morrow School of Communications. Mm-hmm. And I thought that I would do uh, advertising and public relations. And the PR was incredibly boring for me. Uh, yeah. And then advertising, um, I actually got into the field and realized that the culture of advertising at that time was not uh, feeding my soul in any kind of way. Mm. And so I began to search for, well, what else? Like, what else is out there? You know, you spend all this time in school, and then you get out there, you're like, "Hmm, that's not it. Yeah. And so my father told me, he said, hey, well, write down a list, things you love, things you hate, and begin to kind of create bundles of what makes sense for you. Mm. So I did that, and I came up with, some core core items on both sides. And it's like, okay, well, I know what I don't want to do. It's like, huh, what I do want to do, I, co- I copied all those things, dumped them into beta Google. That's what it was called at the time. Beta Google. Oh, right. And the University of Washington School of Social Work popped up. Oh. I was like, huh. 
And here's the funny thing. A person has been serving in her church all her life and always giving, always volunteering. I didn't realize that a lot of what I was doing was actually social work. Oh, yeah. yeah. I never made the connection. Mm-hmm. And so when I actually decided to go into the field officially to earn my master's in that area of study, I was like, oh, my goodness. Some of this I've been doing forever. And I was just putting terminology and ideology to and methods to what I've known. So that was a very, like, true, mm. like, learning experience. Like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. They learn, of course, new things that I didn't know at all. Just kind of the path of discovering yourself and your passions that, that were kind of already existing in, yes. your, in your world. That's well, nice. you know, I always felt that I'm a purpose-driven person. Mm. And so I knew that part of my purpose was to help people and love on people. But it wasn't until probably got into my 30s when I realized that my gift was actually to empower and inspire people to become who they want to be. Mm. Not who society tells them to be, not who their parents think they should be or their spouse think they should be, but who they want to be. And I've been able to help coach women in particular to get to that space to understand, okay, I am worthy. I am more than enough. This is actually who I am. And I I um, founded a nonprofit called Courage Beautifully Empowered uh, about eight years ago, mm-hmm. and I began to launch conferences, um, national conference, Courage Beautifully Empowered Experience, because I thought it was important to really tap into women to understand it's okay to take risk and it's okay to invest in yourself. It's okay to cry and have moments of weakness. It's okay to get all cute and dolled up, but it's okay to understand that you're broken and to also want to not stay that way. Mm. And to also know that you're not the only one who's going through whatever it is that you're dealing with in your life. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the trick is that people feel isolated and they think, well, only I'm going through this or they feel ashamed. I'm going through this. But the reality is in this world, we all experience things. And if we actually share our story, we can actually strengthen and encourage each other. So part of what I do and have done naturally, I guess, is to bring folks together to actually do that. And so really everything in my life at this point, it's all intentional. It's all aligned. So my profession, my how I get paid is being a social worker. And I work for government for a nine to five job. And so I, I create policy and I fund programs that serve youth families and children. Mm. Right. My nonprofit work is really about feeding women and empowering and encouraging them all in the same vein. My tea business is about creating a self-care routine where you are taking care of you. And once you do that, you can then plug into a community of folks who have similar values that you do mm. and create relationships. So well, that's what I do. So there's only so many hours in a day. Of course. How do you have a full-time business plus a nonprofit yeah. plus your tea business? <laughs> right. Well, you know, the nonprofit, I've, I've paused okay. Um, okay. the events because it wasn't, we weren't providing daily services. Um, it was really an event-driven okay. organization. And so we're pausing right now. We, we had our last conference in 2020, and I realized there's been a shift. COVID shifted a lot of things, mm. but also shifted my focus for that organization and what I want to do. So in 2025, when we relaunch, it'll be really around a healing retreat series oh, nice. versus the conference with the fashion show and, you know, all that. So oh, okay. we're not going to be doing that anymore in okay. that way. My business... It's just what I do, right? I I love tea. But I also had to learn the importance of taking a moment to pause, drink my tea, and actually give my mind rest, mm-hmm. right? I've had to learn to write down in my journal all the things that I'm struggling with, all the things that I haven't dealt with. One of the, one of the things in my journal is called um, Tea Time is Me Time. And I have a lot of reflection prompts in there because – Sometimes people can can shift your energy, make you feel a certain kind of way. And you feel in that moment, but you don't actually address it. Mm-hmm. And when you actually pause, and I use tea and journaling as a way to kind of like, okay, what happened there? Yeah. Like, what was it about that experience that made me shift to a move where I don't feel as energetic or I don't feel good or I feel uncomfortable? Because mm-hmm. uncomfortable can be a couple of things, either to be uncomfortable in the space because you are you're needing to grow and you having to step outside what you know. Or you can be uncomfortable in a way that is actually toxic and it's taken away from who you are and is draining. 
Mm-hmm. So you have to be able to actually understand what's happening in that moment. Because people, people, human beings don't want to be uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. We're like, oh, no. I don't want that uncomfortable seat. I don't want the uncomfortable space, that room. Yeah. But sometimes in order to get to the next level of life, you have to be willing to be uncomfortable in ways that are healthy and balanced. You have to get in rooms with people who you may not know, who may look different, be different from who you are, so you can grow and understand and have the perspective outside of what you have always known or outside of your own environment. So I use tea as a way to help folks to create a self-care routine for themselves to help them kind of deal with things. And uh, this is not a, a solution for everything, but it's a way to help you process. And then if you have a therapist or, you know, mm-hmm. you can, or a counselor, you can take that notebook, which you're like, okay. Yeah. Or without some things, I was feeling this way, you know, because they're in the journal, it's like moves that you can identify. So how's I feeling so funky? Or what made me really happy? Like, what brought me so much joy that day? Because mm. also recognize when things bring you joy, make you smile. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like in fashion world, they'll say, if you get complimented on a certain color all the time, that's your color. Pay attention to that. Yeah. Likewise, when you find your space, if yourself being bubbly and happy and just at peace, recognize what's happening in your mm-hmm. space to know what that is and write that down. Mm. Don't forget it. And keep doing it. That's such a good point. Yeah. I am sure so many people forget that. I forget that. <laughs> or it's don't even easy think to. about it. Right. Yeah, of that's why the journal is so helpful. And that's a journal that you created, right? I did. I, I did. really love that. And so people could find that. Yes. But what's my question? My question was so that definitely ties into like you were saying, it ties into the nonprofit that you created as far as helping and empowering women to be themselves and do what they want. Because mm-hmm. it's hard, it can be hard to separate out all of that. Like, yes. what have I been fed all my life that okay. I should be doing? And what do I actually want to do? It's like a whole mess of muddled everything. Oh, wow. <laughs> so to be able to, like you said, take the time and sip tea and journal and mm-hmm. just take that time. That's very, that's empowering and very, very helpful. We, yeah. we get to change our narrative. Mm-hmm. So... When I even when I came to the company, your T coin in particular, it was like, okay, like this is something that belongs to you. It's yours, right? Mm-hmm. And whatever narrative that I choose to put out there, I get to choose. No one else gets to dictate to me, you know, what that is. Now, I might be open to words of wisdom from others who are truth tellers in my life who have mm-hmm. a track record of giving me sound advice and wisdom, Mm -hmm. I'll listen to that. But Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I create my own narrative. So whatever narrative I I had, I had running in my mind about who they say I am or who they say I'm not. I had to learn how to just bust those up. Mm. When I was in school, they, they thought, well, you're not really smart enough to go to university. You should do a trade school. Now, I'm not knocking trade schools. That's great. But I had a dream to go to a four-year university, have that experience. Mm-hmm. And I literally had a counselor in high school say to me, oh, well, you probably can't do that. Really? Mm-hmm. Yes. I'll never forget her name. And I won't say her name because I know she may still be alive. But that was so hurtful. Yeah. And at a moment, I believed her for a moment because I, I grew up, you know, not understanding how smart I really was. And I had a speech impediment. And I didn't really talk a lot for a long time. Mm. Or I would be really nervous speaking in front of people because if I got nervous, I would speak too fast or I start stuttering and I have a lips that still shows up today. Mm. But all those things impacted how I saw myself and the confidence that I did not have at, at that young age. So to have this grown adult who's the counselor, whose job is to help guide me and tell me mm-hmm. that I was not good enough, that was devastating. Now, luckily mm. for her, and for myself, I have amazing parents who say, girl, bye. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's good. What do you want to do? Let's just figure this out. Yeah. Let's help you figure out the next steps. Mm-hmm. So I had supportive adults in my life that helped me to block the negative energy I was getting from people who did not value me or see me as being worthy enough to do right. good things. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Because if you are yeah, going through and you don't have that that influence to quash that thought, then you can get into the cycle of 
just assuming that what everybody around you thinks or puts on you is Mm -hmm. what is, and you don't have, and you get into the mindset that you don't have the option to do anything different, be anything different. It's just, it's, it's laid out for you kind of thing. So yeah, it's important to be able to, you have to know your own truth Mm -hmm. and knowing your own truth. You have to be okay. Declaring your own truth. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not just good enough to know it, but you need to say it out loud. You need to put on your walls. Because when we get hit with life, circumstances, trials, tribulations, it's so easy to forget mm-hmm. our truth and to forget who we are and why we're here. And, and even if you're not even sure about all that, the fact that you have breath in your body means you should be here. Mm-hmm. And that's more than enough. Mm-hmm. Such a good point. When you started the conferences, can mm-hmm. you describe what? what they were like and where you did them and, sure. and all that. Well, when I started it, I was unemployed and I'm a person of faith. And so I literally woke up with a download of everything I should do and the name and the people who I should contact to help me. Mm. And I was like, but I have no money for this. <laughs> this is not, the, <laughs> this is the worst time ever to launch something like this. And, mm. But I felt oppressing to continue to do it. And so I, I just said, okay. And I began to make those phone calls. I began to share what I, what my plan, what my vision was. And women supported that and helped mm-hmm. me to help it manifest. And so my first conference was in Tukwila, Washington. Oh, nice. And it's about 35 women in the room with me. And I had panel speakers. I had keynote speaker. We did Zumba in the beginning. We had good num-nums to eat on. We had mm-hmm. a, gosh, we had a um, Havana Nights kickoff networking hour. Uh, lots of fun and then it just got better and better after that and so I went from 35 people to 150 people in my last conference that was in person it was in 2020 and we had it um, down in Soho area in Seattle mm. and you know we had the full on fashion show we had 30 plus models we had 20 25 makeup artists and hairstylists in the back we had wow. sponsors we had you know catered meals we did workshops around confidence and workshops around walking or modeling stuff and mm. we had a great session of a lot of folks to just call their girlfriends like hey let's have a girls night out and this is where we're going mm. and people were able to get their heart fed get their face fed and get their fashion fed we had yes. dj we had an amazing time and i've been so blessed to have a network of women who i know who are just striving to do greatness in this world and they always been willing to help and to share their own story and to give like it's a wisdom mm. and so that's what i have been doing for the past eight years and so you know now when i kind of pivot a little bit to your tea queen a lot of that has is not lost mm. but now we're doing tea parties our signature tea party will be so upcoming october um we'll have you know ha- fashion shows of so doing the full-on fashion show and some really fun things around it, but really creating time for self-care and creating time for connection. I really mm-hmm. believe that women, when women come together, we shift the universe, mm-hmm. right? We love our men, folks. Yeah. We love y'all. <laughs> but when women come together and they decide to love on each other and they decide to be supportive and, and positive, we literally shift everything. And mm-hmm. so... That's, that's my, what I'm, I think, uh, addicted to is seeing that actually manifest. I see women who don't know each other, who, right. oh, I, I've seen you before, but I, just, I, th- I didn't think I could say hi because you're a CEO of this foundation mm. or you're this business owner or and I'm just a you know, stay-at-home mom or I'm a student, right? So right. I've been able to pull all these women from different walks of life to come together in the space where they can connect. Mm, that's beautiful. And, and kind of transitioning and c- incorporating it into your tea business yes. and the journal and mm-hmm. the self care, and then you said twenty twenty five you have the plan for kind of the revamp of your curves beautifully right? empowered. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes. What yes. was the name again? Say it curves time. beautifully empowered. Lovely. Because we're talking okay. about body positivity. Um, yes. Because at the time that I launched it. Uh, there seemed to be like a war on people whose bodies look different. Mm-hmm. And even though that's not the end all be all to that, um, to nonprofit, I want to recognize that everyone's curves are beautiful. 
You got a lot of curves. You have no curves at all. Your little speed bumps are so as beautiful. Okay. <laughs> um, and so that's where that name kind of came from. Mm-hmm. So yeah, 2025, we will launch those healing retreats and, and have and some fun components too. That won't be all serious. Mm-hmm. But right now your tea queen is what I'm, it's my flag. I'm, I'm flying high and, um, hosting tea parties to bring folks together. Um, right now we have a signature tea party, kind of like how we had the signature conference, kind of the same thing. Mm-hmm. In that respective, but also just selling me learning how to sell tea in retail spaces, um, and wanting also to collaborate with other business owners who are doing cool things with similar values around uplifting and self care and making this world a better place. Mm, that's exciting. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, absolutely. When did you start working for? This is pivoting to. Sure. When did you start working for um, the? The city or the government? Or King County. King County? Mm-hmm. Okay. How long has that been? Uh, I started working in King County in 2019. Oh, okay. So it's so been al- almost five years. It feels oh, like yeah. 35 years now. <laughs> uh, love the people I work with. Uh, King mm-hmm. County Best Rest for Kids in particular because um, this, is, this is a tax initiative that is supported by the voters of King County. And we are literally doing government differently in a way that provides... Um, more opportunities for families and children and people from prenatal to 24 years of age. We are lowering the barriers that a lot of nonprofits who are also black and brown often do not get government funding because they do not understand what it takes to do so mm. or they lack the infrastructure. And so we not only give that knowledge through technical assistance, um, but once you receive funding, we have capacity building so that we're const- constantly allowing you the opportunity to sustain what you've already gathered, but also build for the future. Mm. And so in that work, my job is to oversee half billion dollar levy where I support and help provide leadership. I'm a problem solver at the end of the day. Nice. Yeah. Attached with funds. Mm. And, and, and because I know what it is to work on the ground when I'm looking at policies or I'm in the room to create policies, I bring that knowledge with me to say, actually what you're talking about doesn't make sense because if you are, that social worker or that youth coordinator or that uh, executive director of a nonprofit, these are your realities. Mm. So if we create certain policies that creates more hardship, then we're not serving the people that community who they are targeting, right? Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're doing disservice. And so I'm, I'm able to bring my experiences and my knowledge from all my years of working as a community organizer, working youth development, working and just creating change in this world. So, yeah, I've been in the role since 2019, and so now I'm on the other side of the table. Before I was part of the nonprofit sector, now I'm the funder. And um, some, sometimes that's very cool, but when you tell people you can't fund them, that's sad. Mm. <laughs> You're like, there's not enough money. Like, a billion-dollar levy should be enough, but it's not. Oh, wow. And yeah. so you may have, you know, different different funding opportunities. I say it might be for $7, seven million, right? It sounds like a lot of money, but when you have – the request be twenty million dollars. You can only spend seven million mm. worth of funding like that's you're like, oh that right. hurts. Yeah. Like, I you, we want to be able to do all that we can do, but we can't always do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when it's a program that's bigger or needs more to get yeah. going or rolling yeah. than what you have kind of thing. Yeah, which is which is a small yeah. piece of the the pie. It may seem like a big piece, but Mm. It really takes helping a, a community-based organization understand their own power and understand what they can do for themselves, mm. help leverage what they're getting from us or other funders. And so part of my work is really helping people understand, hey, like this is the opportunity. You may only be funded for three years. There's no guarantee another three years is coming. So what can you do yeah. today to really leverage what you have already received? Mm. Right. So a bit of education and, and yeah. resource, informational resources that you're offering as well. Always, always. Yeah. yeah. Did that program start when you started there or was no. it going on for a um, long time? Best Starts for Kids was um, initially passed, I believe, in 2016, 2017. Okay. And I think they hired their first, I think it probably must have been passed 2016, and they hired their first staff 2017. So we had the first six years of the levy, and now we're in, we're in the, um, we call it 2.0. Okay. It passed again. And so now we have six more years. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I passed last year. So six more years to serve. And then after that, we'll have to see people still find it to be valuable. My hope is that we can stay around long enough to see that child who started in the prenatal stage and are actually 24 years of age living as an adult. Oh. And they've been part of the Best Starts for Kids programming 
on some level to see how they fare. Yeah. So I would love to be seated, uh, stay around as long as that, at least. Mm -hmm. But you never know. Yeah. Yeah. Hard to yeah. tell what, what might happen in the future. True. But that's True. a that's a good goal. I like that. Yeah. So it sounds like you, with all your, your, your nine to five and mm -hmm. then your other pursuits, your passions, that you are doing what you set out to do as far as helping people and, and do some good in the world and in our community, which is amazing. Thank you. What is something that you are most excited about coming up on the horizon for you? Sure. Well, you're tea queen. I am your tea queen. You know, at, the, at the end of the day, uh, I do a lot. But uh, as a beauty queen that sells tea in the self-care reflection journal, part of my goal is to get out in front of people as many people as possible. And so coming up, I have uh, the opportunity to be part of the Brew 5-3 oh, yeah. Music Gear yeah. Music Festival coming up um, mm -hmm. this month on August 12th. So Great. I'm super excited. We're going to be selling iced tea. We have a strawberry so lemonade good. iced tea and our hibiscus um, berry iced tea. And I might throw in something else there too. But mm -hmm. so this will be actually our first time doing a festival type of op opportunity because we're, we're so new. Mm. We really just launched this year and actually doing business. So we're going to be out there and um, see how that goes. So I'm really excited about that because I think anytime I can, I can touch people, see people, share the story of why your tea queen is here and connect them to what I'm doing. That's just an amazing opportunity. Yeah. So August 12th, we will be out there. Brew 5-3. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited. Are you thinking that you'll like see how this one goes and do more vending events uh, or definitely we'll do more a, we're, gonna do black, we're gonna do black um night out nice. uh, market um so we're definitely gonna make our rounds and so we Good. we actually were gonna do that first but july was just so tough for us and so we're like okay right let's be realistic what can we actually do yeah. so <laughs> so yeah that's that's the plan good awesome that sounds very exciting thank you and you mentioned you were a beauty queen, and I remember you mentioning something <laughs> about that in the workshops we were in. Can you explain sure. that? Sure. So uh, 2022, I won the Miss Plus Intercontinental Humanitarian Ambassador uh, crown, and it's my first international crown, where essentially my goal was to connect with women from around the globe and just talk about our, our shared issues. So we had a mm. segment called Tea and Conversations, where we had a chance to talk about you know, uh, what's going on in Kenya, in India, in China, so on and so forth. Mm. And so uh, my reign is coming to the end. We actually fly down to Atlanta um, in two weeks mm. to, to pass it on to some other amazing individual who will do their thing with it. Oh, cool. So pageantry was a way for me to really work on myself. Mm. To When I wanted to present something to the world, it was a way for me to kind of sharpen my skills and be able to articulate my why. Mm. Well, you can always remember your why you're doing what you're doing. You could be very impactful. When you forget your why, you know, saying yes to a lot of things that don't make no sense mm -hmm. for your purpose and for your goals. So Patentry was a, a great vehicle to be around sisterhood, make connections from around the globe, and just really have fun. You get all dressed up and dolled up and shining and glitter. Yeah. But yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, yes. <laughs> It is. And you get to travel around. You get to go to Atlanta. And yeah, and travel and support folks who are doing really cool work. Um, every pageant woman has a platform. Mm. So mine was around cars being empowered and empower women to soar into their, their, into their personal awesomeness, to see, to accept, and to love who they are just as they are. Mm. That's been my platform. And so it's just a great way to be seen and heard because when you have a pretty crown on your head people are kind of curious to know what you want to say yeah, very they true need to say here is what i'm <laughs> doing and they need money or here's what and they need volunteers and here's what i'm doing and here's how you can help mm -hmm. so it's, it's been a great way just to um make great connections mm, love that that's awesome it sounds yeah. like you've had a really busy year and a half two years because you got married recently too i did that same uh, last march i okay. competed in that in this pageant and then two weeks later, we got married. Oh and so I planned a wedding and international passion preparations. Oh, my god! At the same time, I was in very insane. I, I will take full credit. It was my intention to everything end up so close together. But um, mm -hmm. it's what happened. And you know what? I won. And 
we walked down the aisle, and it was a, it was a beautiful wedding, and we had um, lots of love in the room, mm-hmm. and really good food and really good cake. Mm. Yeah. That's a, a major piece. Of yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Awesome. Indeed. And your husband's hanging with us today. Yes, so Mr. Thanks for hanging Maurice out. Harrison. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How'd you guys meet? Oh, goodness. An app. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. A dating app. And, um, That's how it goes. The funny part about it is that when I got on this app in particular, it was a newer one that, that I subscribed to. I was trying to unsubscribe. Oh. And you know how it's so easy to sign up. It's so hard to unsubscribe. So I'm yes. trying to not try to get off this thing. And then his message comes comes through. Mm-hmm. So I was afraid to say, well, so that's a nice face. <laughs> what are you talking about? So, you know, I read the message. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. Hello, you know, mm-hmm. thanks. And then I forgot all about the app. And two weeks later, I came back to it. It's like, oh, shoot, I was trying to get rid of this thing. Mm. Again, trying to figure out how to unsubscribe and and there he was in my inbox again. He was like, you know, uh, may I have your phone number? Because I don't want this opportunity to speak to you again. Mm. I was like, oh, well, okay. Here's my number then. <laughs> and so I gave him my number and he called a couple of days later. And um, once we talked, we, just, we never stopped. Mm. Yeah. That's sweet. Aww. How long ago was that? Uh, we got married in March 2020, uh, 22. So we've been married a little bit, almost two years. And so 2021 is so when we met. Is when you met. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Nice. So we dated, or say courted for a year. Okay. And Aww. Got engaged in that December and got married in March. Amazing. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I guess we are still kind of new. It's true. I, I, yeah, my husband and I, we just had our five year anniversary Aww. and we joke that it was like, oh, happy 35th, <laughs> happy five billionth. <laughs> Look. It feels like a long time now. But. I mean, yes. <laughs> two, almost two years feels like a long time, but right. my parents have been married for 45 years now. Right. And so. That's an I'm actual like, long time. Yes. That right? I was like, yeah, we have nothing on that. <laughs> right. <laughs> nothing. That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Did I miss anything that you wanted to discuss today? Where, oh, where can people find sure. your all your things. So you find me on my website. Oh, back up. My Instagram, officially your tea queen. It's a great way to be updated on what's going on new. And I'll share pictures and my products and that kind of thing. You'll, you'll actually see me do more of that um, shortly. Um, and then my website is uh, your tea queen.com. So either place you'll find me. I'm also on TikTok. Same, same handle. Wonderful. So. And your tea is so good. You Thank brought some you. iced tea here for one of the events here, and it's just so good. There was like a whole line for. I know. It's like, yeah, they like my tea. <laughs> it was real good. So I bet you'll have a great time at the Brew 5 3. Right? Yes, I'm so excited. It is next weekend. Yes, next yeah, weekend. Yeah, yeah. So awesome. I'll sell some tea and meet people. Have a good yeah, time. Yeah, that sounds fun. Well, thank you so much for joining me on Take Notice. And I could ask you a million more questions, but I won't keep you longer. Maybe okay. another time. Sure. But uh, thanks for joining me and doing this and spending the, the afternoon with me. And thank you. Appreciate You're it. You're so welcome. Thank you for asking. We can have to be available. I think any time that we can share our story with each other, it's just an awesome thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I loved hearing your story and learning more about you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for Take Notice, Amplifying Black Stories. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to share it with someone you know. Connect with us on social media. We would love to hear from you. We are at Take Notice Podcast. You can also find us at takenoticepodcast.org. Reviews help us reach more listeners, so please rate and review on your favorite podcast app. Take Notice, Amplifying Black Stories is produced, hosted, and edited by Allison Preisinger Heggins. Music by Version Big Five featuring Darius Heggins. Thank you for being with us, and thank you for taking notice.